Hey guys, it's Marty here. Uh, welcome to a new video. I know it's been a while. So this video is really just an update video to tell you where I've been, what I've been up to. Uh, there are a couple of themes, some threads from the previous videos that I thought would be good to talk about, uh, which is the Rudolf Steiner videos and kind of what's going on in um, spiritually, what's going on in the world right now, because it was a thread that I kept talking about in real life um, in the last couple of months, which I'm going to tell you about right now, where I've been, what I've been doing. So I took a job as a work exchange at a quite um, established retreat center and I loved it. Uh, you might notice that I'm looking a lot more vibrant. I'm a lot happier. I feel a lot healthier. Part of that is the climate. Um, part of it is the area on the earth where we are, uh, where I was living, where I'm going back to actually. And a little side note, I'm, I'm currently in Peru. I'm in the Sacred Valley. And on the note of health and wellness, I realized yesterday that there are no chemtrails in the sky here. And I have been kind of on a, I was working with plant medicine just once while I've been here. I've been, I'm gonna be here for about a month in, in the full uh, circle of it all. Um, but Wachuma or San Pedro is the well-known plant medicine here. And kind of for me, when I work with things, it's sort of like an arc up, even though the medicine isn't in my body, I can feel the energy of it kind of coming through and then it arcs down. And one of the big uh, realizations a couple days after the ceremony itself was me noticing, hey, oh my gosh, there's no chemtrails in the sky. And I just have been loving looking at the sky. Uh, I'm looking at it right now when I'm not looking at the screen. So I'll probably pop in a little video of what I can see outside of my window here. And maybe at the end of the video, I'll put in uh, some photos that I took because I also like taking pictures. Maybe some of you know this already, but I took, um, before I became a spiritual coach, I wanted to become an architect and I did go to school for for architectural design. I did my uh, undergrad in Canada. And during that process, I, I acquired a really great camera that I still take around with me. It's like 11 years old. I do have a new lens for it, but you know, just kind of cool to think that in this world of fast paced, quick, new technology, all this stuff that my, uh, you know, decade old camera still does a good job at capturing the moment. So I hope you enjoy those pictures at the end. I also wanted to mention that, yeah, this theme of Rudolf Steiner um, kept coming up with a lot of people that I met. So I really did digest that content to, I mean, and you can go backtrack and watch those videos if you want to. Uh, it just kind of explains a lot about, as we all experience this global shift in uh, the pandemic and how things are moving into like smart cities in Canada, we have this, uh, track to move. Yeah. To have like these 15 minute cities kind of thing and a lot of technology, technological advances, this kind of stuff and how it links in with, um, the spiritual world based on Rudolf Steiner's content is that we are prepping right now. And I don't know when this being is actually going to incarnate, but we're prepping for a being called Aramon to incarnate. And he talks about a lineage of uh, Lucifer incarnating 3000 years before Christ, and then Christ incarnating uh, during the time that we know with the Bible. And for me, uh, Jesus and Christ represents the heart chakra, forgiveness and alchemy of the heart and compassion. And this really like, in, um, it kind of marks the moment in time where human development was able to go within on a grander scale and alchemize and kind of take um, sovereignty or take charge or take uh, responsibility over our actions in such a deep way that we can alchemize uh, the frequency of whatever that lineage, whatever that history was within our, our human development 
to really self-reflect on it, to be able to feel it through the heart. Uh, that's heart alchemy, right? So we can uh, take the pains and sufferings of our lineage, of our own lives, of our past lives, of humanity in general, depending on what level you're working on, how powerful you are. We start with ourselves. Usually we start with ourselves. We start with kind of the um, inner child pains of this lifetime. Then often those will link into past lives and have like similar themes going on. And then maybe we start working with our lineage and really kind of going back, you know, shamans say that it take, it's about five generations of healing that we can do within our own genetics. Um, so we can do that inner work through meditation or plant medicine is like a big activator, but just a tool, you know, sometimes people can get stuck in the plant medicine world. So to take it with a, just like you would any other tool or system to know that the most powerful piece of transformation comes from your own spirit and that it's important to process and do the, um, the outer shifts in your life, whatever the lessons are to really bring the actions forward in life, um, to keep it balanced with what, you know, the medicine that you're working with. And that's just my little two cents on that, because I know some spiritual teachers, uh, you know, there's kind of a polarity happening with people who resonate with plant medicine, people who don't, and I tend to resonate with it. Uh, but generally, I tend to be a little more hard hitting. I like the, the like big boosts sometimes uh, to help understand or especially move density within the body. I feel like a lot of the times with um, uh, San Pedro and Ayahuasca, you know, because I'm in Central America and, and South America right now, they are uh, part of the indigenous culture here. So they're not illegal, like in Western, in the Western world. So it's okay to talk about them in these kind of spaces. Um, that they help kind of get into the physical body in such a deep way. Uh, we also have to have our soul development matching uh, where the plant can meet us, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's a, just like you were meeting a teacher that is a human being, we can meet plant teachers in the same way and have reverence and respect for the process that they offer as well. Um, so that's a little bit on that why maybe I look a little brighter, a little happier, because uh, I have been working with some of these medicines here. Um, I'm not uh, someone who teaches that on my channel. This is just a personal reflection that you can go and search that for yourself. You know, look, you know, tune in with yourself. Find places where it's uh, accepted, where it's where it's legal, countries where it's legal, and um, my. Mm, my uh, two cents, I'm forgetting the word, what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but you know, my, uh, my advice, that's the word. My advice is that to try to find something that feels safe in your heart and try and look for an, an indigenous lineage where this medicine has been worked with for, for a long time uh, so that it, it is held in the space and the respect it deserves. So back to Rudolf. Steiner. I went on from Christ to plant medicine and now back to um, what's going on with like the technological world and this new being that's incarnating that is very much about um, kind of taking the human consciousness and, and creating rote patterns with it and, and, and putting our kind of copycatting everything and really systematizing. This is artificial intelligence, right? Like taking consciousness and making it a rote pattern or a system that is still that is so sophisticated that in a way it still kind of looks organic because it's copycatting in such a sophisticated way even with energies so that is uh, something you can read about through Rudolf Steiner and if you type in Rudolf Steiner and Aramon together you'll be able to connect uh, that with that information again you can go back to some of my other videos um, and it's a theme, I think, for a lot of people because we're, we're all feeling this big shift that's happening in the world um, and maybe not knowing where it's coming from or why or what the, the, the root is, why um, we're being molded in such a way, you know, and uh, the reality is, is that there are groups in this world that have 
been doing this for decades, if not centuries, molding human consciousness and kind of just like we would take a herd of sheep like a shepherd and bring them to a location where we want them to be. It's, it's the same with human development. There are groups that are um, molding and shaping the direction of the human human race. And at the same time, there's also a cohort of humans, souls in human bodies that are wishing to go in the organic timeline. So there's this kind of AI timeline and the organic timeline. So that's, you know, for me, I, I really like the way Rudolf Steiner describes it because he explains that you know, it's not about resisting this new energy that's coming in, but it's about finding a, sp a space of sovereignty within ourselves with this new third energetic. So before we were working with Lucifer and Christ, it's dualistic, duality, right? And, you, you know, I've just been watching Gilmore Girls and I find like every time a show is really well known and you see that checkerboard floor, you know, it has something to do with these uh, secret brotherhoods or secret groups. Um, kind of molding our culture in a way. There's there's signs everywhere to find this stuff. Um, so that's the duality, the light and the dark. And we work within that as souls to grow and develop, and that was kind of on purpose for a long time. And, you know, we're, we all grew through it and we all evolved because uh, in that system, and it, it served us in a way when it was in balance. So, and so now there's a third energy coming in, and it's for us as you know, awake and aware individuals, it's about learning to navigate now with that three tiered energy, energy signature. So we're, we're, you know, in a way it's kind of like moving through, um, it has more movement. It's not so much like a ping pong. It's like an evolution through three energies. And at the same time, you could also think of luciferic energy as being the higher chakras, which when we pull them into the heart, they become uh, working for the light, looking, working for knowledge and goodness. When it just stays up above, it can get a little distorted and um, elitist and this kind of stuff. Um, and then we bring it through the heart. Jesus, you know, Jesus is compassion. A lot of beings here on earth at this time, we've developed that Christic heart inside of us, and that's what activates our self-awareness and our ability to be healers in this life with ourselves and our lineages, and then even more so maybe further out to affect our communities and so forth. Uh, and then the third being, this new one, this Aramonic being, and a little kind of linking here is that, um, you know, Elon Musk is kind of a big uh, advocate of artificial intelligence and the sort of global spokesperson for this stuff and his, um, one of his, I call her baby mama, but uh, Grimes put out a music video a little while ago called Aramon. So there's a link into the real world that you can look up yourself if you want to. Um, and this being is governing the lower chakras where in the healing world, the lower chakras is where we hold our traumas and our pains. It's the stuff that has to be lifted up from density and cleared through the heart, through compassion, through lesson learning. And, um, you know, so now because this being is activating those chakras more uh, in a bigger way, you know, because this is a kind of a global activator incarnation, and maybe I'll do a video on kind of soul incarnations and how they kind of work through the physical body. You know, we all have souls that, that have had different um, amounts of lifetimes living on this planet and on other planets, and a lot of people probably who are watching these videos are volunteers or light workers or developed souls that are here to sort of navigate into the organic timeline for humanity. So this is more like the Pleiadian, um, the Christic timeline for me, that's what I resonate with. And I'm in Peru hopefully meeting a Keros woman. So that's another thing I wanted to share with you all. Um, it was supposed to be yesterday, but we'll see. She had uh, some health issues because she's quite elderly, but she is a Alto Misayek from the Keros here, and their history is that in they were only kind of discovered by the Western world in the 1949, I believe, um, and they moved up higher into the mountains here 
when the Spanish came in and kind of conquered the area and brought um, Catholicism into the space and kind of deleted the magical, mystical aspects of connecting with the earth. You know, this happens all over the world. Uh, but for whatever reason, the, these this tribe um, went higher up. So to me, that's like higher up into the heavenly energies and lived there without contact. They kind of went into hiding and kept their connection with um, the uh, Apus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, which is this, the sacred mountains here. And for me in, in my ceremony recently, like I could see the faces in the mountains. It was so, so interesting. That was my intention was to connect with the, the mountain spirits here. And I've heard little tidbits too, Kind of going all over the place but i hope you can follow that um, different mountains have different negative and positive extraterrestrials i guess you could say you know there is a pleiadian portal here um, to the pleiades the keros work with the Pleiade, Pleiade, pleiadian energies so to me that's kind of the ones that i resonate with but i've also heard the anunnaki are here and other uh, beings one that i can't even remember the name but one of the locals was explaining it to me and i've heard from other uh, people on YouTube about uh, government, you know, things going on here underground as well. So it's all about vibration. When we stay in love, we're kind of in the higher tones, so that keeps us safe. Um, but it's good to be aware of everything that's going on. And I was talking about Eremon Keros. Yeah, so hopefully I'm going to meet this woman tomorrow, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted. If I do, I'll probably make another video. And um, oh yeah, the last thing I wanted to talk about is, yeah, you probably noticed I look a little happier, a little healthier, a little more vibrant. And the importance of knowing, you know, sometimes we're doing this inner work by ourselves, but the land where we are has a lot of, um, you know, depending on where you're living, there's portals of energy and some of them are positive and some of them are negative. You know, this earth is sort of a space where everyone who wishes to be here has the, the right by divine uh, law to be here. So finding a space where it's a higher frequency is really going to help you heal, right? So for me, that's what I realized I needed was the support system of others to um, come back into my frequency because where I was living previously, it's quite a densified space. So naturally, you know, the, that saying, like, if you can't beat them, join them. It's for me, I've always found that my energy just sort of, uh, you know, I mean, not all the time, but it, I was living around my family. So that makes a difference too, because that's quite a connection that I will balance out and become the median frequency of where, where I, where I am. So what that means for me and for you, for you guys too, maybe is how to acknowledge how important it is to find communities that you either are gonna help you line up, meaning that their frequency is higher than yours. So when you're with them, naturally you're gonna start, you know, healing the things that are in lower frequencies and moving up into those higher realms. And, um, and that can mean a whole bunch of things. So I, I teach kind of the science of the energy field and how to work with our chakras and breath and high sense perception, this kind of stuff. But it's also exercise. It's also the content we're watching. It's also the food we're eating. Like I mentioned, there's no chemtrails here. Oh my gosh, there's nothing going, there's no heavy metals or weather manipulation going into the crops. You know, where I was living before, they're all over the fields. Whatever it is, I'm not an expert on all the details, but something foreign that is not coming from Mother Nature is being dropped into our um, fruits and vegetables. Is that good? I don't know. What's the purpose behind it? Is it really for weather manipulation? I don't, I don't know all the details. I'd love to hear um, if anyone has some good videos on some on the science behind it. That would be great. But why I brought it up is because here there's none, and it just feels so much better. <laughs> so, uh, so food, what we're putting into our bodies. I did a cleanse where I'm working, where I'm going to be going back to in, in November, a cleanse that removes uh, gallstones and cleans out your intestines and cleans out your colon. 
Um, and at the same time, you're held in this container where you're processing the emotions that you're also releasing. So, the, you know, we can work with energy. It's great to know that we are fundamentally made of vibration and sound, sound and light and frequency, and that learning the auric field and how our programs are stored in there, how we can lift them out from uh, the level of high sense perception and breath and imagination and these kind of things. But also the root of it is the physical expression. So when we can really get it out of the body, what's being stored in our life as an unconscious being, or even just living in this world because they are waves and the reality is it's quite a hard hitting environment. There's lots of stuff that isn't uh, life affirming that we ingest, whether it's food or thoughts or TV or whatever it is, living in the city, fumes, exhaust, heavy metals, you know, all this kind of stuff. But our bodies are so sophisticated at the same time, we can find ways to also uh, take them out of the body. And I really appreciated doing that cleanse. So yeah, so really, this video was just an update. I wanted to say, hey, I'm still here. I'm probably going to uh, revamp the, the YouTube channel a little bit. I don't quite know what the main threads are. I mean, it's, it is about energy healing and healing and self-development, this kind of stuff, spiritual awakening, heart healing. Um, I had originally thought I would put on uh, like uh, tarot card readings uh, maybe I'll be putting crystal crystal information on here too, but I'm still feeling it out because I did go through a really big update just now in my own self-development. So, um, so Earth Art Healing is still the name, definitely going to keep that. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to say, hey, I wanted to touch on the importance of finding a community where the vibration is higher or matching your soul frequency, um, how that can help you grow. To touch on where I am, that I'm in Peru in the Sacred Valley, I'm gonna throw some photos in at the end for your enjoyment. And that I'm still here and that Earth Heart Healing is getting a couple revamps. I am planning to make the Soul Growth Breakthrough Bundle a uh, the lowest tier, one where you don't work with me live, so it'll be quite um, less expensive. Uh, so all the videos will be like this, uh, and that program has brought a lot of women through it. No men yet, for whatever reason, but please, if there's any men out there that want to work through the uh, energy field and through their emotions and work with the heart and kind of activate their feminine aspects or impulses, you know, it's not just for women, but tends to be um, attractive to more to women. But that's getting a revamp, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, that I still am going to be doing one-on-one -on -one calls, healing through Zoom. Uh, we work with breath, we work with um, uh, guided meditation, the science of the energy field. Sometimes I work with crystals, and that's really very effective. Uh, if almost as effective, if not similarly effective to working in person, I find. Although, of course, sacred touch is a beautiful thing that you don't quite get when you work through the screen, but you still get that extra boost of support from, from me and my, my guides and my support system. So that's it, really. Just wanted to say hi. I hope you're all doing well. Please uh, write a comment if you feel to, if there's any uh, themes I touched on that you want to share about or if you have any um, videos that you liked yourself in, the, in those areas, feel free to post links below. I think you can do that. I hope you can. And um, I'm sending you so much love. Really looking forward to this channel starting to grow now that I feel comfortable on the screen uh, and I feel healthier and more alive. I really like this kind of just chit-chatting with you all here and um, I'm sending you my love. I hope you're all feeling successful and held in your healing journey. Um, and I will see you.